Dear students, today we shall be taking on one of the important topics mostly asked in various competitive examinations that is bioluminescence in fishes. Before proceeding, it is my request to you all to press the bell icon and subscribe my channel BioLearnia. Now, when we when we say bioluminescence, bio it is life and luminescence it is light. That is light produced by the living organism. So we are talking about the bioluminescence in case of fishes particularly. As I was talking that the bioluminescence is the production or emission of the light by the living organisms. It is a kind of chemiluminescence. We can also call it the chemiluminescence because it is actually the reaction of chemicals which eliminates, which produces light by forming the photons. Bioluminescence is widely seen in case of the invertebrates such as we do have the examples of the fireflies, insects, various insects. We do have the jellyfishes and even it is found or seen in the case of the mushrooms as well which belong to the plant kingdom. There are various microorganisms as well which are bioluminescent and they also help in the production of light in some animals or fishes as well. So in some animals the light is bacteriogenic. So the light produced with the help of the bacteria which are present on the skin or some part of the animals we call such light production as the bacteriogenic light. And it is produced by the symbiotic bacteria such as those from genus Vibrio or other genus. It can be autogenic that is self-produced by the animals themselves. So it means it the animals can produce the light with the help of the bacteria or they may be having the capability of the autogenic production. When we talk about the distribution that where this very uh, these such kind of the fishes are distributed. Mostly these bioluminescent fishes have the worldwide distribution and majority of them are bathypelagic. Mostly these fishes are these fishes are bathypelagic. Bathypelagic. Now, which zones they do occupy mostly? 500 to 2500 meter below the surface. And some of the, these fishes, they come to surface at night. And some of these species are found much deeper in the waters. Now, we were talking about that which fishes produce bioluminescence and I was talking about that the bathypelagic mostly but mesopelagic fishes and the deep sea pelagic fishes they extensively show the phenomena of the bioluminescence. So it means that mesopelagic fishes and bathypelagic fishes uh, have the um, they have the capability to produce their own light and mostly they are the bathypelagic fishes which live in the deeper waters where there is no light that is why they have the capability or they adopted themselves or they evolved in such a manner that they produce their own light to survive in that very extreme dark conditions. Now besides these mesopelagic and deep sea water fishes, few coastal water fishes which we call the which we use the term neritic. So coastal water fishes such as anomalopes, one of the fish that is anomalopes, 
This fish is also found to have the certain intensity of the bioluminescence. Then we do have the photoblepharon. It is found in the East Indies and the Porichthys. They also they also show the bioluminescence. But we have to keep in mind that it is mostly the bathypelagic, but some mesopelagic fishes they also show the bioluminescence. But rarely some of the coastal water fishes such as anamelopes, photobilipharon, and the porichthys they show bioluminescence. Uh, one more thing that the bioluminescence is not seen not yet recorded in the case of the freshwater fishes now where these organs are present for example that which where in on the body such bioluminescent organs are present or the source of the bioluminescence is present now lateral line we do have the examples where in the lateral line ventral sides of the body and the head they have the bioluminescent organs or the source of the bioluminescence but they may be arranged in one or two rows extending on the sides from the head to tail for example in the case of the scopalus here in this very case that these extend these very light producing uh, this very source that is present rightly from the head to the tail which we can see in this very encircled fish or it may be present in a limited area for example in the case of the photoblepharon photoblepharon this very luminescent organ is present just just below the eye just below this eye which i'm um, just putting in green so it is present just at one place just below the eye so we do have the another fish that is opostomias opostomias it has transverse bands then we do have the luminous barbels in the case of necrostomias and in some elongated first fin ray of the pectoral and the dorsal fin as in the case of angler fish can be found and it can also be seen it can also be seen on the lateral line in the case of the toad fish it can be seen on the lateral line in the case of the toad fish so in the case of the scopalus it is seen rightly from the head to tail uh, in the case of the uh, scopalus in the case of photoblepharon it is seen on just at a at one point that is just below the eye in opostomias it is seen as the transverse band it is seen as the transverse band or it can be barbels in the case of opostomias or sorry it, in the case of necrostomias it can be in the form of the barbels or it can be elongated first fin ray as in the case of the angler fish or on the lateral line as in the case of the toad fish so how light is produced in the fishes i told you earlier as well that if the light is produced by the fish itself we call that that very production as the autogenic production but many a times some of the bacteria or the bioluminescent bacteria can be present on the skin or other parts of the body which can act as a source of the light then we call such as the extrinsic source so to chief types of the light production can be found in the case of fishes they can be some species can be self luminous so we call this very as the intrinsic source having the intrinsic source or the light is produced by the symbiotic bacteria so we call that that very source of the bioluminescence as the extrinsic source so light producing organs in fishes they are specialized glands we call them as the photophores in the case of the intrinsic you can say bioluminescent fishes or the autogenic source of the light so these very specialized glands of the epidermis show considerable variation in number and mode of distribution on the body i was talking 
to you that in some animals light is bacteriogenic so if the light is because of bacteria we call this very as process as the bacteriogenic light production and it is produced by the symbiotic bacteria such as genus vibrio and in others it can be autogenic produced by the animals themselves and there is a record that about 1500 fish species 1500 fish species 1500 fish species they are known to be bioluminescent they um, the capability evolved independently at least 27 times during the course of the evolution so of these 17 involved the taking up of the bioluminescent bacteria from the surrounding water while others while in the case of others the intrinsic light evolved through the chemical synthesis so if there were 25 incidents out of which 17 that is out of which 17 evolved by taking the bioluminescent bacteria from the water whereas uh, approximately others while others they developed their own source by, by developing certain certain uh, you can say photophores uh, to produce the light um, which is which can be because of the chemical synthesis so these fishes have become surprisingly diverse in the deep ocean and control their light with the help of the nervous system it is just to lure the prey or hide from the predators but also it is not just only for the uh, to lure the prey or to hide from the predators but also it can be used for the communication as well then let us have a little bit idea about these two kinds of the fishes one where an intrinsic source is there and other where an extrinsic source is there so first of all talking about the intrinsic bioluminescence now what happens in the case of intrinsic bioluminescence that is fishes which have their own photophores so such species with intrinsic bioluminescence use their own luciferin and luciferase system so it is the luciferin which by the enzyme luciferase helps to produce the light so we do have the example for example in the case of the bioluminescent sharks they use ventral photophores these very photophores ventral photophores to mimic the residual light from the water surface and they remain unseen by their potential predators so we call this very process as the counter illumination counter illumination we call this process as the counter illumination because the predator which is present on the lower side thinks that it is just the light the uh, the sunlight which is coming from the upside but is unable to see this very shark that is small shark which is the prey of that very predator so the other sharks for example they produce the constant glow some of the other sharks they produce the constant glow and swim up and down in the water to remain unseen and follow <coughs> so called uh, isoluminescence depth depth isoluminescence depth so they produce light so that they they can stay in that very zone where their light matches with that of the uh, that 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 of the original light so we do have the other examples for example we do have the uh, tiny cookie cutter shark it belongs to the uh, isistius brasilensis for example we may be talking about this very tiny cookie cutter shark this very tiny cookie cutter shark it uh, this has unusual feeding behavior this small shark bites round pieces of the flesh from the pre pelagic predators such as swordfish and tunas and one of the such studies indicates that it has ventral photophores to lure the pre uh, pelagic predators and 
it does not use the counter elimination just as we talked about the uh, in the in the previous slide but it in it uses its ventral photophores to lure its pelagic predator and cuts them into the small uh, small bites it takes small bites from them then we do have the another uh, small deep sea lantern shark um, we do we um, we call them as the atmopteris so herein what was suggested it was it was suggested that um, it uses the light organ on the dorsal spine as the visual signal signal that detter predators in addition to the ventral light organs for the counter eliminate elimination then we do have the lantern fishes lantern fishes they belong to family mictophidae they show high diversity and are highly abundant in mid waters and these very lantern fishes they have the photophores they glow to the sides and downwards so they, they glow from the sides and downwards and uh, they 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 uh, just uh, uh, they uh, show the show large photophores large number of the photophores that produce strong and short uh, strong and very short light flashes to attract its prey then uh, we do have the fishes that is the second category which have the extrinsic bioluminescence that is that, that may be because of the some other source now what are those resources that we shall be talking about so fishes with the extrinsic luminescence they lack their own luciferin luciferase system so they host symbiotic bacterial species so they usually host the symbiotic bacterial species in specialized light organs that can either be appendages of the alimentary tract or they show light organs under the eyes such as family um, ano melopidae anomalops so they have the uh, just the light organ just under the eye and in the in the in the specialized dorsal fin as in the case of the angler fish uh, or the light organs at the anterior angle of the lower jaw as in the case of the family monocentridae as in the case of the monocentridae they may be having the light just near the lower jaw so the angler fish if we talk about the angler fish these are the fishes of the teleost order lophiformes and they are bony fish and they got their characteristic mode of the predation in which a modified luminescent fin ray this very fin ray we call it as the esca we call this very as the esca or elysium elysium or esca so it acts as a lure so this very acts as a lure for the other fishes so this very when this very fish moves its dorsal fin this very modified dorsal fin in just in front of its jaw the small fishes think that it is a, just a worm or some other organism and they come to eat this very uh, this esca or elysium and at once the fish angler fish opens its mouth and uh, captures them so the, the uh, luminescent it comes from the symbiotic bacteria which are thought to be acquired from the sea water and they dwell dwell around the esca the cardinal fish another that is cardinal fish we do have the have the siphamia or tubifer they show a ventral light organ and is active during the twilight and it has been suggested that this sifama use the light to detect the zooplankton as well then we do have the this very this very mouth breeding sifamia it it hosts the luminescent 
symbiotic bacterial species that is photobacterium and one study also described that the symbiosis was initiated almost 8 to 10 days after the release of the parent's mouth so from the after the 8 to 10 days from the release of the parent's mouth they developed their own uh, this mechanism of the luminescent bacteria and developed their own light so there are different mechanisms as well we do have the other examples as well such as uh, we do have the many deep sea angler fishes uh, such as uh, family ceratoidae they use l l luminescent lure at the tip of a modified dorsal fin ray and host symbiotic bacteria related to the genus vibrio we do have the example for example uh, i was talking about the angler fish and these are generally thought to use and lure to attract the prey by the elysium or esca and the prey capture was also suggested in the case of the gaza minuta this very gaza minuta it belongs to family uh, leogonathidae and it display a discrete projected luminescence and it was proposed that this very Gaza Minuta, it attract and locate the fish on which Gaza Minuta nocturnal, nocturnally feeds. The flashlight fishes, that is this very fish, that is flashlight fish, we talked about this very Anomalopes or Anomalopes uh, catoptron. Um, these very fish, they comprise almost six uh, genera and including nine valid species such as anomalops um, captron then we do have the photobliferon which is widely you can say um, discussed fish then we do have the palpibratum we do have the we do have the photobliferon um, photobliferon uh, steenzai they uh, live relatively in the shallow waters of the coral reefs and feed on the zooplankton during the night so the we do have the flashlight fishes um, we also call them as the flashlight fishes they show the enhanced activity during the night and they show bean shaped light organs under the eyes so this very organ they show bean shaped light organs under their eyes and host bacteria of the genera candiatus so this is the this is the petri dish which is showing these these very uh, bacteria this is the petri dish showing this very um, luminescent bioluminescent bacteria and such kind of the bacteria can can be um, you can say they can grow under the eyes of this very fish uh, to attract the to attract the zooplankton as well so interestingly these very related species such as anomalops and the photobliferon they use different mechanisms to close their light organs for example this very fish this very fish either and there are two mechanisms either they contract their for example this very photo this very um, is present uh, here under the eyes and they can contract the muscles to uh, to hide this very part when they hide this very part they are not bioluminescent and this is because of the contraction of the muscles so one is method is by the contraction muscles they can they can contract the muscles and they can hide this very part under their eyes and the second is to have some other organ a flap like organ to cover this very place many times those very fishes which have the bioluminescent bacteria under their you can say fins what do they do they cover their fins or they just um, fold their fin and the bioluminescence stops and in many others they can contract their muscles so that they can um, put on and off the light in the um, dark as per their requirement as per their requirement we do have the other fishes such as um, dragon fishes which belong to the malacosteus and uh, otter stomy formis we do have the such fishes they emit the bluish green light many a times they emit the bluish green light 
and most uh, most luminescent fishes and the dragon fishes produce long wavelength red light and such as malacostius they they emit the red light and there are many other fish dragon fishes which belong to stomy formes they are the group of the bioluminescent fishes which emit blue green light but the malacostius fish it emits the red light the the there are many dragon fishes of the genera malacostius which emit this kind of the red light then we do have the uh, pachystomias we do have the pachystomias or the aristomias this is aristomias and this is the pachystomias so what happens in the case of the pachystomias or the uh, aristomias they show suborbital photophores suborbital photophores that emit long wavelength red light and the post orbital photophores that glow blue so they can produce the uh, they can produce two kinds of the light that is the long wavelength red light and and the short wavelength uh, or the blue light as well they can uh, they can produce the uh, different lights so the function of the red bioluminescence it might be related to the intraspecific communication so now the question arises that why do they many um, produce the red light why produce uh, many produce the blue light so it its its function can be one function can be to attract or lure the prey and other can be the intraspecific function that is and when the uh, it has been found that when they produce the red light it can be for the intraspecific intra communication intraspec that is within species and it has been suggested that these very dragon fishes uh, malacostius niger this very fish malacostius uh, fish it uses red luminescence to see without seen by the animals so it produces this very light without being seen by the other animals such as predator predator so we do have the different varieties of the fishes which show bioluminescence uh, so we till now we came to know that the uh, bioluminescence can be intrinsic because of the well built photophores in the epidermis or it can be uh, extrinsic because of the bioluminescent bacteria now how this very light is regulated now the question is another uh, important question is that how this very light is regulated so it can be um, the, these very luminescent organs they are richly innervated and the luminescence is chiefly under the nervous control so we do have the two that is the, it can be under the nervous control nervous system under the control nervous system or it can be under the endocrine it can be because of the endocrine glands so um, the they are these very photophores or the luminescent organs they are richly innervated it it means that they are chiefly under the nervous control so the transmitter substance it may be adrenaline or noradrenaline in the case of the fishes so both kinds of the you can say uh, transmitter substances may be responsible it can be adrenaline or it can be noradrenaline in the case of the fishes and then mechanical regulation of the emission it can be brought by rotating the luminescent organ or by concealing the aperture by pulling over the pigmented sheath as i told you earlier that it can be because of the contraction of muscles to hide them or it can by putting on some flap to hide those very areas which are which are bioluminescent and some fishes such as photostomias Uh, the photostomias they rotate the bioluminescent bi organs downward by the contraction of the muscles to conceal the bright surface and we do have the another fish that is ediacanthus ediacanthus it pulls down the pigmented sheet in front of the light producing surface so in both ways they regulate this very bioluminescent organs now what is the mechanism of the light production how this very light is or this very luminescence is produced so i was talking about that 
those very fishes which have the internal uh, this very uh, intrinsic system of the bioluminescence we call this very as the luciferin luciferase system so in this very case luciferin is reduced uh, redu uh, luciferin which is in reduced form is activated by the atp for example this very luciferin substrate it is it is changed to oxy luciferin now how this very is changed to oxy luciferin it is by the um, by the enzyme linked adenylate of the reduced luciferin so luciferin in reduced form is activated by atp and luciferase to produce enzyme linked adenylate of reduced luciferin so this activated this activated luciferin reacts with oxygen and exists for short time in an excited state before it returns to its ground state and it in this very manner it releases photons of the light energy as uh, as it is shown in the case of the uh, in the figure so what happens this very luciferin reduced it reacts with atp in the presence of the enzyme luciferase and um, it uh, produces the enzyme luciferin um, and and this very enzyme linked luciferin adenylate it reacts with oxygen uh, or oxygenase to produce the oxidized product and photon or in many in many fishes which you which we, you are seeing right now that they may be having the photogenic tissues and the pigment and the color filters and in this manner they produce the light in the in in any part of their body uh, according to the um, where these very um, these very uh, um, you can say organ is present photo 4 is present so um, let us have a quick um, recap of the important light producing families of the fishes the important families such as ceratoidae having the angler fishes somiatoidae having the lantern fishes and the scaly dragon fishes so in the ceratoidae we do have the angler fish one of the most important examples of the uh, bioluminescent fishes in the stom stomiatoidae we do have the lantern fishes lantern fishes or scaly dragon fishes then we do have the holosauridae holosaurid eels holosaurid eels uh, then we do have the sterno uh, stonoptychidae uh, we do have the hatchet fishes we do have the hatchet fishes these are the important you can say um, bioluminescent families we do have the betraquidae in which the toad fishes um, belong betraquidae then we do have the zoracidae we, we do have the eel pouts which are bioluminescent we do have the brotolidae brotulus so um, brotulus species then we do have the lophidae again some of the angler fishes we mostly use the common name angler fish because they they, they have the elysium and the asca uh, the modified dorsal fin uh, changed into the um, elysium and asca uh, that is why in the form of an angle just as we use the fishing rods as um, as the angles to capture the prey that is why they are these very such fishes are known as the angler fishes but they can belong to uh, different families as well so in the lophidae again angler fishes and then we do have the mictophidae that is the lantern fishes as um, shown earlier as well lastly let us discuss that what is the importance of the bioluminescence why these very fishes evolve themselves to emit the light and what is the significance of this very light why do these fishes emit light so there are several functions of the light organs and the blink patterns in the flash fishes that have been proposed by different scientists these very light organs they assist in predation they assist in predation for example i was talking about that this very light is used to attract the prey and i was talking about the angler fish as well wherein the dorsal spine is modified and it acts as a lure asca and elysium it acts as a lure 
to attract the small prey so that they come nearer and the fish will grab them and to avoid the predators the second important function is to avoid the predators this very rapid blinking in a coordinated manner or at once the production of the flash in front of a predator it stuns the predator and the prey uh, that is the fish having the bioluminescent organ it gets the chance to escape from the uh, predator then thirdly the intraspecific communication this very production of the light is also used to communicate within species such as school formation territorial behavior courtship behavior so many a times these very fishes they produce the light in a coordinated manner to 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 use this very light as a language to communicate they form schools they stay together they form a territory they they try to attract the mate so as to show the courtship behavior we do have on the fish i was talking about earlier that the photoblepharon they live in pairs in the small groups between the corals and the rocks and the photophores on the head and around the eyes they are used as the search lights to illuminate the potential prey these very flashes of the light or emission of the luminous material can act as a defense mechanism as well i was talking about the dragon fishes earlier as malacostius or the astronestes they emit trains of the light flashes at up to 5 hertz from the patches of the luminous tissue on the head they which distracts the predator and in the case of platy trochidae the shoulder organ can emit scintillating groups of the cells with the luminous granules and the shallow water flashlight fish and often use blink and run escape response in which they suddenly turn off their lights and dash off in different direction the post orbital photophores of many dragon fishes and other deep um, deep sea living fishes they can be used to mislead the predators before the escape response and most of the fishes in the upper mesopelagic um, zone they have the venter counter illuminating photophores for the camouflage uh, camouflage and in certain myctophytes it has been shown to alter the intensity of the light emitted from the photophores to match the dawn welling light the many, in many fishes the use of the lures by the shallow water angler fishes lophius to attract the prey it is a well established example and it is likely that the bioluminescence is used for intraspecific communication as well as i was talking about the strongest evidence it probably comes from the observation that the distribution of the photophores is species specific in stomidae which we call them as the dragon fishes and the sexually dimorphic as well as species species specific in many myctophid or lantern fish species so this implies that bioluminescence can be used to recognize the members of the same species for schooling purpose with mating and sexual behavior mediated through the bioluminescence so this was all about the bioluminescence and there are many more functions which can be attributed to the uh, to the bioluminescence such a we, um, i was talking about the defensive function misdirection smoke smoke production alarm production or offensive function lure stun confuse illuminate prey and mate attraction and recognition so the this very this has importance and the fishes of the um, mesopelagic and the bathypelagic zone have developed this bioluminescence to adapt themselves to such a kind of environment where there is where the light intensity is very less now i do usually tell that in the deep sea waters there is eat or be eaten rule 
So if they miss the chance to eat, they will die of hunger because the uh, number of the animals living in the deeper waters, it is far less. Whosoever eats can survive. Whosoever can escape survives. And it is difficult to find the mate there because of the huge area and the less number of the, uh, you can say, counterparts. So this very bioluminescence helps to attract the prey, attract the, to keep away from the predator and to attract the mates. So this is one of the important um, significance of this very bioluminescence. Thank you. This is all for today. In terms of the bioluminescence, next time we shall meet again with another interesting topic. Thank you very much.